question and answer on our environment. The first is which of the following groups contain only biodegradable items? This one has plastic, this one has leather. Leather, uh, if it is processed, if it is in natural form, then it is biodegradable, otherwise it is not. So, uh, fruit peel, cake, lime juice, cake, wood, grass, so these two. C and D is correct answer. They all contain biodegradable items. Biodegradable items are those items which are naturally degraded in certain forms so that they can be reused by the environment. Which of the following constitute a food chain? Food chain means one level uh, consume other, the next level consume the previous one like this. So grass, goat and human. So goat feeds on grass and human eat goat. Some of you may not, but it's a food chain. Which of the following are environment friendly practices? Carrying cloth bags to per put purchase in while uh, shopping, that is not using plastics. This is a good practice. Switching off unnecessary lights and fans, you are saving electricity. This is a good practice. Walking to school, if it is, you know, one or two kilometers away from you, instead of getting your mother to drop you on her scooter or car, this is also a good practice. So, we'll go with this one, all of the above. The answer is all of the above, D. What will happen if we kill all the organisms in one tropic level? So, at one tropic level, these are different levels. So, this is a food chain of, uh, food chain being formed. If the one level is being uh, killed or they are vanished, if you kill all the organism in one tropic level, the transfer of food to or energy to the next tropic level will stop. So there will be a break in the food chain and that will cause ecosystem imbalance. If these organisms, they do not have anything to feed, uh, then they will die. They are going to die because they don't have anything, right? And because this they are not having this thing and uh, at the lower level, the lower tropic level, this one, because it is not in being eaten by this, this level because this we have finished. So the growth of this level will be too much. So there will be an enormous growth in the population and both these condition will cause, will result in ecological upset. Will the impact of removing all organism in tropic level be different for different tropic levels? Can the organism of any tropic level be removed without causing any damage to the ecosystem? The second part is, you know, we have just seen in the previous question, this is not the case. Because any tropic level is going to affect the previous level and the next level. And first is, will the impact of removing all the organism in a tropic level be different for different tropic levels? Yes, it is. So the the impact of removing all organisms in a tropic level will be different for different tropic levels. Let us start with an example. If the producers are killed, it will cause death or migration of the next level, primary consumer on, in the ecosystem. If you don't have any producer, the next level, the subsequent level of consumer will also be affected. But if you remove the primary consumers, the organisms of the higher tropic level, they are either going to die because they don't have anything to eat, or those of lower, lower level means again lower level will increase in, uh, in uh, you know abundance you can say because there is no tropic level to eat them or to consume them and because they also do not have this level so they will die or migrate. So the uh, lower level this level will show exponential growth and which is beyond the capacity of the environment to handle. And removal of the organisms in a tropic level will upset the whole ecosystem as all the categories of organisms they are linked through food chain. There is a chain, there is a food chain. So the survival of organism of one tropic level, it depends on the existence of the members of other tropic levels. What is biological magnification? Magnification means increment, amplification. Will the levels of this magnification be different at different levels of the ecosystem? See, the progressive increase in the concentration of non-biodegradable substances in a food chain, this is known as biological magnification. That is too much increase. 
magnification. So the level of these harmful substances will ultimately be transferred to next level. When certain harmful substances enter our food chain, at say at the, at the very low level or primary level, they will get concentrated many times when we, they reach the higher level. right? So they will enter the food chain and they are going to impact the next level. That, that is how the biological magnification is occurring. What are the problems caused by non-biodegradable wastes uh, that we generate? See, nature is producing only biodegradable wastes. And non-biodegradable wastes, these are being produced by us. We are the culprit. So non-biodegradable wastes cannot be broken down into simple uh, substances like you take the example of plastic. And their volume keeps on increasing, creating the problem of their safe disposal. And you, because how to reuse them, how to dispose them safely without affecting human beings, without affecting the flora and fauna and the environment. So some of the non-biodegradable waste like the heavy metal and the pesticide, they actually enter the food chain and they increase up to the highest level, tropic levels. So non-biodegradable waste, they reduce the soil fertility also because they will change the natural pH balance of the soil. If all the waste we generate is biodegradable, will this have no impact on the environment? No, it is going to have impact. Biodegradable waste, waste are those waste that, that, that can be decomposed by microorganisms into simpler substances by themselves, by the nature and they will provide raw materials for producers. But as the question is being asked, there are adverse effects on the environment. How? If these biodegradable waste, they are decomposing very slowly, then there will be the foul smell, there will be increase in the microorganisms, there will be harmful gases. And those gases if inhaled by us or other animals, they will cause irritation, nausea and giddiness. If we decompose or these decomposing waste provide breeding ground for some harmful organism, they, there will be disease. So abundance of these harmful or organisms will cause plague-like disease in animals, plants and human beings. So this is an adverse effect. An increase in the number of organization in aquatic medium. Water is also there. There is an aquatic life. There is an aqua aquatic flora and fauna ecosystem. This will cause oxygen deficiency in water bodies. And ultimately, the whole ecosystem will have an imbalance. Why is damage to the ozone layer a concern for us? What steps are being taken to limit this damage? See, this is our globe. And there are atmosphere. Atmosphere, we have uh, troposphere, then stratosphere, then mesosphere like this. So there is ozone layer also. Then ozone layer has a very specific task of, of uh, inhibiting and allowing only a, a very less amount of this ultraviolet rays to pass. So this ultraviolet rays is very dangerous to us if, if it is being sent or we consume it in uh, abundance. So we just need a little, little of these. This ozone layer is specifically for that. It, it is controlling the entry of ultraviolet rays to our earth, to us. So ozone layer is a protective shield around the earth. It prevents this harmful ultraviolet radiation of the sun from reaching the earth. This air pollutant, CFC, chlorofluorocarbons, these are causing the depletion of ozone layer. And this is allowing greater amount of this ultraviolet radiation to reach earth. So this ultraviolet radiations can upset the ecosystem because they are affecting, they are, they can affect the photosynthesis in the plant. How? If large amount of oh, the ultraviolet rays are exposed to the trees, plants, planktons and decomposers, they are going to affect, they are going to die. So in human beings, this ultraviolet radiation this may cause skin cancer and this has been seen in New Zealand, in Australia, some places where there is an ozone hole. So cataract in eyes, damage in immune system, all this will be the, the, the uh, effect, adverse effect of uh, having a lot of uh, this ultraviolet rays. So several developed as well as developing uh, nations, they are doing you know, a lot of uh, activities to just stop making or producing these CFCs or any other thing which is which is causing the ozone layer to deplete. So these were question and answer on this topic. Thank you so much and take care of yourself.